but I don't think the critical theory is going to remain. I, I mean, maybe I'm a fool. I don't think it's going to be particularly seductive much longer. And I think people are starting to see it as, as being kind of poisonous. No, I mean, I'm just, I'm worried because, um, you know, as you're, you're saying that there's all these, you can, you can study anything with critical mm -hmm. theory mm -hmm. and there's all these classes and graduate programs about this stuff. And it's like, all these people are getting these degrees. And as you were saying, they have to exist in this perpetual state of victimization because that's their job. I mean, that, right. you know, that's where all these online publications, you know, like Vox and Slate and all this stuff, you know, they just dredge up these people that got these useless degrees who don't really want to do real work. Cause it's not, it's not even like they're, they're not going out there conducting real studies. It's just, as you were saying, so it's like this armchair sociology. So it's just, I'm wondering what's going to happen to this wave of, of people and students that have, you know, no job experience and no practical skills of the world, you know, what are they going to um, do with all this, this hatred that's boiling up inside of them? Yeah, that's a problem. I don't know. Um, I think that what's going to happen, they are a relatively small proportion of the population at large. Uh, surveys are showing it's probably 8% or less of the population at large in the U.S. anyway, that are in that category. And as, as a lot of other academics point out, the, the departments like gender studies, et cetera, are, all, are only putting out uh, a few thousand graduates per year, as opposed to something like 500,000 graduates overall per year in the U.S. in all majors. So um, they do represent a relatively small proportion. What I'm noticing is that not only are you seeing a massive resistance to this coming from the right wing or even this the kind of undecided middle you are seeing even the left what would maybe be described as a center left or a more reasonable left whether no matter how far left their politics are um that are, are saying so i get asked again and again for example I, yeah i'm a liberal I believe that there are real issues around racism and sexism and social justice matters, but the social justice warriors are doing it wrong. They go too far. What do I do? I get asked that all the time now. My friends, I have friends across the political spectrum. When I get together with my friends who are on the left, they are very consistently saying things like that they've had enough of that. They've had enough of this animosity. They've had enough of the craziness. So I think what you're going to see is that a, a, more and more people are going to turn on it. And as more and more people turn on it, um, the proportion of them will become smaller. As to what happens with those people who have made their careers into this, um, that's very unclear. And uh, it's not likely to be pretty or comfortable. And you will probably see their death throes coming out and being fairly ugly. Uh, and they'll probably end up occupying little niche sectors that go on complaining more or less forever. Um, that happens kind of with everything, though. And it, like you said, you know, you can, you're can you worried that you can critical theory anything. And I will point out that it's particularly seductive. But you can kind of Jesus anything, too, if you want to get into the religious thing. And the difference is people when they see somebody putting a religious spin on something, whether it's, I said, Jesus, so Christianity, whether it's Christianity, whether it's, it's some other religion, it doesn't matter when they see it, they kind of know it. And right. they're like, uh, I know what you're doing here. The trick is that people haven't caught on. And I think they are catching on when people do the problematizing thing that they're doing this kind of like religious looking thing. And it's like, Oh, I know what you're doing. Yeah. I'm good for you. You know, I'm not a bad person well, it's comforting. I don't believe your religion. It's comforting to hear, especially the numbers are so low. Because, I mean, even, you know, uh, myself and Adam, we get kind of sucked into our own bubbles of like, oh, my God, the social justice stuff is like this wave that's just going to crash across the country. But so it's good. To, it's good to hear that things are not it, anywhere near as bad as. It is crashing across the country, but <laughs> okay, I, don't, so it is, so I right. don't think that there's another wave behind it. Um, right, I understand. So one and done. I I think well, the, as you said, in the '90s there was one. Most people don't know that there was a pretty hefty push in the just before 2010, particularly in the evangelical churches. I've only recently started looking into how this has impacted the evangelical churches over the years, and there was a, there was a healthy push to to institute what we would now call woke, but they didn't uh, theology through say like the Southern Baptist Convention in 2010. And really? um, that's very surprising. 
Yeah. So, so, so there, that was a there feeling been of race waves or waves of this already. I don't think that I mean, and there will probably be similar similar things that happen again later. But I don't think the critical theory is going to remain. I, I mean, maybe I'm a fool. I don't think it's going to be particularly seductive much longer. And I think people are starting to see it as as being kind of poisonous. But a lot of people still do it, so it's hard to say. Just just to double back to the. The introducing it into churches is that like a race thing? You said like introducing oh, yeah. woke, th- so they. Oh yeah, <laughs> they totally. Tried. It's right now. It's critical race theory. It was more um, post-colonial theory in 2010. So you know they were talking about a post-colonial theology that talked about you know it was the, uh, coincided with a lot of outreach into like you know Africa and South America and things, and um, trying to build their churches abroad. And so you had this whole. Par- what they would what they do is they build a parallel thing like critical nutrition studies is parallel to nu- to nutrition studies and they try to give it legitimacy and then all of a sudden you have one with an adjective critical and one without it or in this case you have post colonial theology you have critical race theology which is ascendant right now in the southern baptist convention very very, very prominently ascendant, where it's like, you know, racism is our greatest sin, it's a mark of our original sin, and blah, 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 and it's like, it's really infusing into the critical race theory is the big one now. So you have critical race theology, post-colonial theology, queer theology, maybe, I saw that thing on Twitter yesterday, um, probably less of that one in the Southern Baptist Convention. And uh, then you have plain old theology, which they try to um, connote as being chauvinist in nature or status quo or patriarchal or some, you know, anti whatever the woke object is. So you have the the socially good ones versus the old style bad one. And then that's how they do this. And so right now you have critical race theory pushing in 2010. It was mostly post-colonial theory. And they're the, the bid right now, I think, is, is proving quite successful, which is scary for those churches. Um, as for what that will do to political voting blocks in the country, I don't know. Um, it'd be very interesting to have a large number of woke conservatives, evangelical, yeah. <laughs> religious, I don't know how, how these people vote. Um, it seems like an oxymoron. Because, yeah, how is that possible? Because it, it's possible because it all manipulates guilt. It, the theology twists your guilt. Uh, the you know oh you were, you're born a sinner you're all this stuff and then this critical race theory twists your guilt you were born into a racist system that you know as, as Robin D'Angelo has said nobody is bad but nobody is neutral and so it's like um, really easy to start problematizing yourself and go into the whole white guilt thing and anything it's twisting that kind of a emotional vulnerability in this case guilt is really easy to seep in. Um, so philosophically, I think that's, that's how it's possible. Um, and I mean, you can check it out. There are a whole bunch of preachers now talking about critical race theory. That's crazy. You, you, you'd mentioned in another interview, and this actually seemed kind of like a ray of light to me as well, (laughs) that you had tried to hoax, uh, psychology journals and sociology journals, and you, you couldn't get any papers in those journals, which made me think, okay, well maybe psychology and sociology is somewhat safe. I mean, we recently had the APA come out with, you know, the, the how to deal with ma- male patients that seemed very like critical. Toxic th- yeah, toxic masculinity. Oh, that was bad. That one was bad, actually. I went through the references on that, and a, there's a lot of overlap, I'll say, between the references they cited and the references we cited to write our papers. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, no. So, um, so did you just hit the wrong journals and you probably could have done it, or maybe it's not no, a ray of light? Maybe. No, so I think that so, so you want to think of grievance studies not as like discipline. So not like gender studies is a grievance study. I mean, that's a really it's a kind of a fair way to look at it in some cases, but it's not really what's going on. You want to think of it as a set of methods. It's it's a, a, an approach to knowledge, and and so psychology and sociology as disciplines have a variety of things that are going on within them. But many of those things are more rigorous and require statistics and actual experiments and things like that, (laughs) whereas they're not just social theorizing. And so 
to penetrate those journals would have required having more the ability to mimic more rigorous methods or to produce more rigorous methods mm. and the amount of time we had didn't allow for that of course i think that they are not as infected as your cultural studies or identity studies fields are um fields like gender studies are pretty much completely overrun with this that's not to say it's impossible to do rigorous or worthwhile gender studies even as a form of social philosophy um, and in fact, I think we have a need for that that's been destroyed by the fact that everything has to accord with postmodern theory if it's going to be publishable there. Um, but in psychology and in sociology, to varying degrees that I can't put numbers on, but I have guesses um, that they're both roughly a third corrupted by these methods. Um, you have you have other things going on that kind of tether the thing to reality more, and that make it uh you know more attendant with rigor they do have that whole replication crisis thing going on though which is not good for them um some of that is probably related or as the grievance scholars would say co-constituted with um the the problem that we're talking about where you have this desirability to prove certain um certain social effects are occurring or certain ideas are, are valid descriptions or theories are valid descriptions of uh, how society works or people work. And so those biases creep into how the science is done. But overall, I don't think that they're nearly as corrupted as um, these fields in the humanities that are, are just social theorizing. So it's, it's ugly and not hopeless and what we've found, although most won't say it publicly yet, a few will, is that sociologists and psychologists who don't agree with the critical theory approach are fairly aghast to be so closely associated with this and are starting to try to make something of a stand for their disciplines. And I hope that they do more of that. Uh, if I were a sociologist, I know that I would be absolutely highly motivated to try to rescue the reputation of my discipline by improving standards and taking action to improve standards rather than uh, wallowing in this or even getting mad at you know us as the, the people who perpetrated this whistleblowing operation. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you. That's one of the reasons why I think we need to conceptualize it as an audit because I mean, if we're going to deal with the type of problems that we're talking about, legitimately deal with them, I feel like we need psychology and sociology. Like, those are the tools that we actually need. The, the scientific rigor in both of those fields has to be good. Right. I think we also need stuff like gender studies that, and even race studies that are being done responsibly, that are, that are rigorous philosophy, interdisciplinary philosophy efforts to make sense of those findings that you would get from rigorous sociology, rigorous psychology, matching that with evolutionary biology, where and when it applies, et cetera, et cetera. So we do have a need for good and rigorous uh, studies of cultural phenomena. And sadly, we're not getting those. And we also have need for good, rigorous sociology and psychology that is in anthropology and so on and biology that are informing these fields and what we need the least of is fields like critical nutrition studies or critical nursing <laughs> or something like that trying to misinform established fields particularly in in medicine or law or education uh where the the, the effects that they have are going to be truly outsized Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.